Hey everyone, Yan Zhao back again. Today, special guest, Chloe the cartographer. So today we're talking about maps, maps, maps. What are maps good for? What can they do for you? And how do you make them? <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me on. This is very exciting. All right, so um, if you could just let everyone know a little bit about yourself. Who are you and how did you get into map making? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, my name's Chloe Bolland on Instagram and um, Twitter. It's Chloe the cartographer or something similar. Um, and, yeah, I've been doing, playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons and other uh, role-playing games for a very long time. Like, at school, a group of us would play second edition um, D&D. &D. Um, and I quite quickly found I preferred, at the time anyway, I preferred uh, running the game being the dungeon master than um than playing um and yeah there wasn't the internet um as a resource back then um so we had to draw our own maps a lot of the time and that's really where i started and then you know i go to university kind of move away from role-playing games get into other things and only last couple of years i've kind of come back to it and then remembered how much i quite enjoyed just drawing the maps uh, and so, yeah, it was last year I started putting together some maps for a game I was going to run and people started asking for commissions. And so now there's a whole Chloe the Cartographer thing going on. And do you, do you have a background in art? No, but I've always, um, I've always enjoyed drawing. So I, I, you know, I did a bit of art at school. I've always, um, uh, it's always been a hobby. I, I spent a lot of time um doing portraiture or um uh, fashion sketching um and so for a little while i was experimenting with you know the the kind of character portraits that people do mm -hmm. yeah i'm just i mean I, i'm in awe of really talented character portrait artists and, and comic artists as well and i am nowhere near good enough to make any use of that there's some stuff on my instagram you can see some of my attempts they're okay but um I, I'm too slow and, and just not got that expression. But drawing maps, I don't know. I seem to have found something that 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 I like doing that I seem to uh, seem to be able to do and people value. So yeah, we keep doing maps. Um, yeah, and you'd be surprised actually how often the portraiture or um, fashion illustration comes into it. Right now, I'm trying to draw um, a cross section map that's got a view of three statues. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> suddenly I'm not drawing blocks. It's it's people shaped statues. They've got to look right. Um, so it still comes in handy. Yeah, I have noticed uh, people who do this kind of thing tend to fall into one of two categories. Either A, they're an old school player and just throughout the years they've drawn so many maps that they just decided they liked it and then said, hey, you know, maybe I can, maybe I can make a little money doing this. And then on the other side, you have people who went like to school uh, and they're like fascinated with maps and that's all they want to do. And then they need to figure out how can I make a living doing this? And then yeah. they end up in the RPG I mean, space. When 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 the real graphics designers work out that there's, you know, people who want maps drawing um, that, that I've had my day because I've never been trained. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I know it does help knowing um it does help knowing Dungeons and Dragons, knowing the role playing games, knowing what you want from a map. That really is quite important. But fundamentally, if you've been trained as a graphics designer, if you've got years of experience, you are going to get very good. Uh, you're going to be able to turn it to, to that. And, you know, um, whereas for me, it, yeah, long term hobby drawing, sketching, I think that's important. Um, you've got to be able to make shapes uh, with the pen. Um, but, um, yeah. Uh, first and foremost, it's an art form, <laughs> and, and and if you're good at art, you'll get on with it. Uh, definitely, and we'll take a look at some of your maps in uh, just a minute. But I kind of wanted to go back. So you said you started playing in the uh, AD and D two E era. Yep, I did back then. Given away right. my age. So, um, oh no, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Yeah. So back we. I mean, at school, I, I think I went on holiday and one of my friends um, didn't have anything else to do. So I got sucked into um, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I think it was just, um, you know, those colored box sets of Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and and you know when I came back, uh, you know they were like, yeah, you got to try this out. This is so much fun, um, and it was good fun. And we and I really liked sport or running around the playground at school. So we were quite young, or you know, um, I don't know, ten, nine. You know, we were young. Um, and Alien D Second Edition was quite established, uh, so we quickly moved on to that. Um, and yeah, just lunch times we were setting up. Cat- we only had. I think 40 minutes for lunch. I don't know how we made that yeah. into a session, yeah. but we did. I know, we just did. You got straight there, not even focusing on eating, rolling up some characters. I would have drawn a map last night with no detail at all on graph paper or probably during maths instead of... <laughs> <laughs> and and then we just, yeah, just play simplistic games. Um, and, you know, I was kind of wondering because in the US at that time, um, like there was 70s and maybe very early 80s when D&D was kind of like a family game and people, you know, it wasn't so bad. But by the mid 80s with the satanic panic and all that kind of stuff, I mean, you you like you had to be careful of who you let know. So th- this was yeah, I mean, this was late, late 80s um, kind of uh, and, and it, that kind of moved past the UK, mm-hmm. I think, to a certain extent. So we were aware of it. Like I think I remember seeing some articles in Dragon Magazine and um, you know, about that and thinking <laughs> it's a load of rubbish. Um, but you know, we 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 ran a club at the school and there was no opposition. It was just, you know, I mean a slight mocking because it was quite nerdy, you know, okay. teachers being kind of, you know, well, that's a nerdy thing. And and I remember seeing seeing it referenced on TV programs like uh, Quantum Leap and The Simpsons mm-hmm. in a negative way, but other than that, and they were American. I mean, in, yeah, in the UK, they were, it just wasn't so much for us. Oh, but we, we spent a lot of time laughing at c- crazy moral panics in in America. And, you know. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> we do by. now. I, yeah, I can't. Yeah. I can't wait until twenty years from now to see what people are laughing about in the twenty twenties. But can, um, yeah, I can imagine. But yeah, it's a, <laughs> but I mean, uh, yeah, it wasn't. There was no challenge from anyone, any of my friends, parents, any teachers. Oh. There was no um, no concern whatsoever. And we, you know, we put demons in the end of half of the dungeons. You know, they're great enemies. No argument. Sure. You get to kill them. <laughs> so, um, no, no ambiguity there. <laughs> and so, like, as you got older, you got out of school and everything did you did you move on with uh yeah, other I, editions or or did you always no, I, I i skipped all the others i went to university i think third mm-hmm. edition was probably out at some point and um yeah i went to university i went to the role-playing club played a couple of sessions didn't get on with the people didn't get on with the and just had so much else i was in getting into at mm-hmm. the time i did i didn't feel i needed it all my friends stayed with it um i got quite into you know, collectible card games like Magic that was kind of replacing mm-hmm. some players for a little bit, but no, just it just wasn't needed. I, I still did some art, but um, yeah, uh, moved away from it. Didn't didn't feel it it was needed, and only really got back into it a couple of years ago, three years ago, I think. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, when our friend, um, a friend who we used to play with, suggested we did a game online. Um, and a group of us that used to play together are now playing a game. Have done for, yeah, still, I mean, we finished one campaign, um, uh, Princes of the Apocalypse, so fifth edition. Oh, excellent. Uh, and um, now we're doing a homebrew campaign. Um, and I'm playing, not uh, running it, which is I'm actually really enjoying. And I ran a game, and it's a lot of work now, not yes. draw a map the night before on graph paper and pencil and randomly fill it with monsters you haven't even got stat blocks set, sorted for it, it's more work when you try and do it properly so um yeah um, it's yeah it's, it's great fun it's a great way of connecting it's nice I, I like playing online with i mean it'd be nice um to be able to play in person but it's just not um, practical with this group yeah. so um yeah so yeah a few years ago and then yeah i turned the art to to towards Dungeons and Dragons, firstly characters and then maps. Interesting. Uh, all right, so let's take a look. Um, this is your art station, and there is a link 
to the art station in the description for this video if anybody wants to check more out. And so one of the things I found uh, very interesting is that, you know, a lot of people who who do this kind of work, they're like very kind of, for lack of a better word, anal. Like they have one very, very specific style and they don't like to deviate from that. Whereas with your maps, you know, we can see a couple different styles. We, we have the, uh, like a standard top down, like this is the official map. And then also um, sort of a, I guess you call it like three quarter view, uh, like you have yeah. the Whitehorn. Do you have any, do you prefer one to the other or? So I'm, I'm, I was and still am finding my my style um and I, I tried a few things so this um and this map whitehorn it's um in the forgotten realms um um and it's a town i don't think any games have been to um i think it's referenced in one um one game in fourth edition so it was nice i picked, picked a town from to start my campaign in and then mm -hmm. um just developed it um so yeah, though, and this was my first town map, so I um I was just figuring it out. I, if you look carefully, you can see a lot of the houses I've cheated, I've, I've replicated, or changed details, or coloured them differently. But I quite liked the um the fact that you could pick on individual houses. So you you know, as a when I was running it as a game, the the, the characters, the players could you know say, oh, well, you know, we're going to duck into this house here, and you had some visual reference. It it, it felt the right scale. But I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot I don't like about this map that I would improve on in future. I wish the streets were more defined. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think it, it yeah, it, I don't think, don't you quite get the kind of hilly shape. I wish I'd made it look a little bit more on the hill. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, um, it worked. And, and, and off the back of this map, I got quite a few requests for, that's when people started asking me to do maps. Um, ah. And yeah. All right. And I was kind of wondering, uh, yeah, how you started with that process. Were, was it just people randomly sending you messages and saying, hey, I have cash. Uh, I'll trade it. Yeah. For uh, yeah. I mean, to start with, it was um, do you take commissions? And the answer was no. <laughs> but, you know, what do you want to do? Maybe we do a map together. Um, wasn't ready to start with to take money. There's a lot of pressure when someone's paying you. You've got it to, to deliver. And so of the first few uh, commissions in inverted commas were free um, and I'm okay with that I, I, I'm more mm -hmm. happy with that because I was still developing and figuring it out and, and learning about stuff and bringing kind of legal and tax and cost you know into it um so yeah I did a map is there a I think there's another map of a village it's not quite as good as this but um, um... that I did and maybe it's not on there if you go to my Instagram so I've got more maps on Instagram because like this one? so that's a recent pr proper paid commission. But if you mm -hmm. go back a bit further in time to um, um, scroll, keep scrolling down until we see another uh, town map. Uh, keep going. Hillview. Do yeah, do uh, Dorna Wand. So Dorna. that oh, was okay. Yeah. So that was a one that I did for a friend that wanted a map for an adventure. Um, uh, and you've got his um, tag up there, DM Nine Toes. Um, and I used a lot of the same um, houses, but made them look a bit better. I, I felt I got an actual bit of movement to left and right, up and down the um, um, hill. I liked the water flowing through it. I think that looked good. Um, it's a bit washed out color-wise, so I, I've, mm -hmm. I've learned a bit about colors. But uh, yeah, I, I didn't, um, at the time, I wasn't charging for commissions. It, this was a practice. Um, and it's later on when you know I felt confident enough to to, to charge. And and the other thing is, I, I didn't want to charge a trivial amount because actually, um, uh, uh, these things take an extraordinary length of time. So if I was going to charge, yeah. I'd want to charge for the whole of the time. And if I'm doing it as a practice, then I can take my time in my time frame and I can put it down. And you know, the the person I'm doing it for, you know, they're, they're getting it for free, so they'll take what whatever. Um, but this was, I was pleased with this one. And and so, yeah, I've, I've kind of grown town maps from there. And if you go to um, back in, there's a black and white town map I did recently um, right at the at the top. 
that I'm super pleased with. Um, oh, yeah, the one in the middle there, that, that this one. Yeah, this so that was great. for Sly Flourish. He's a big publisher, mm -hmm. you know, online of, of indie, uh, a superb indie content. And, you know, this is where I've taken that. There's a few of those houses dropped in there, but mostly it's the same idea. I, I draw a house. Um, it's a shame Instagram ruins it. It's so detailed. You can see individual tables on top of those uh, buildings in some places. But um, yeah, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I copy and transform the buildings so they all fit within the, the perspective that I've got there. Um, and this is in every way a better map. Um, and now, you know, I, I mm -hmm. charge um, appropriately for a map of this detail. Um, and so when you make these maps, are these generally for the end user to print out and use like on a tabletop game? Or do you find that more people are using them like on a roll 20? I think they, I think they want both. So a lot of, uh, I think it's kind of two big markets for people I'm doing commissions for are, um, uh, one is Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. So they want big, colorful, in-your-face maps online, um, you know, because a, a map tells a, lo a lot of story for, for what you want to. So, you know, the um, Disaster Hamsters 2 Kickstarter that's coming up um, has got uh, a world map in it. And then maps like this that are for uh, um, someone who's producing an independent uh, game um, or, or a publisher. I have got a couple of items for publish publishers. Um, yeah, that, then they then that's when it needs to print, and that's where a little bit more often I'm being asked for this, which is black and white, not not grayscale, but black and white, um, and that that was a new skill. Hmm. Um, there's um, a little story there. That, um, Keith Ammon, who is the monsters know what they're doing guy, hmm. who produces very really good books. Um, and the blog is excellent, actually. I, I've been to it uh, for, you know, how do you make a beholder really hold its own <laughs> against the party and knows what they're doing? Great insight. Honestly, I wouldn't take him on in a DD and d game, a tactical genius. Um, he wanted some maps doing, and he was asking for people who had experience of proper black and white. Um, and I didn't at the time. I, I, I messaged him and said, well, I'm, I'm pretty confident I can do this, but but I don't have any experience. And he's like, yeah, I'm really looking for some. So I just went away and did one and threw it at him. And he's like, oh, OK, <laughs> I respect your hustle. <laughs> we'll give it a go. But I, but I had a great time doing the maps for him. And like this one for Sly Flourish, um, he wanted pure black and white, no grayscale. So hatching or dots or textures to convey shading. Um, it, it's, it's harder than color. Um, yeah. It takes more time, um, but it's got that old school D and D feel. I quite like it. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. Um, so, would you say you prefer this? Uh, just when you're when you're working, do you get sort of more enjoyment out of a map like this versus uh, like a standard top down battle map? Or I I like the variety. Mm -hmm. I don't think because I'm hand drawing everything. I don't think I can compete with some of the other cartographers that are producing extraordinarily beautiful top-down battle maps. Yeah. Um, well, I can. I'm, I can produce good good work, but the, the, it takes me a long time. So, you know, when we oh. look at the cost, it just doesn't add up. So, like, this was one for Keith for for mm -hmm. his upcoming book. He was he was willing to, to you know to 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 you know, pay cartographers for the time that it requires to put this level of detail in because he wanted a, a very specific look and a very, and, and there was a lot of iterations getting getting down to this map. Uh -huh. But more, to, more often than not, there's some extraordinary um, cartographers, particularly using tools that place assets mm -hmm. that, that are just quicker and, and that mm -hmm. it looks just as good. So although I love doing these, um, I don't know. Uh, I, it, it has to have a really, it has to have a need for something really bespoke in it to, to be worthwhile. Uh, I have to say, so one of the reasons why I contacted you instead of some of the some of the other cartographers for uh, this show is, I mean, you in this have solved a lot of problems that I don't see them doing nearly as well. So, for example, um, let's look. Okay, so if we zoom, oh, that's as far as we can zoom in. But if we take a look at this floor. 
you know, there's a question of how do you keep the squares because yeah. they're supposed to be one inch square and people sort of need to know like, well, how many squares am I moving, but yet not make it look like you're moving on a chessboard. And so, you know, when I took a look at this, ah, here's a better example, just the way that, you know, you don't need to delineate every square if you're doing sort of every other, like in the case of these. Yeah, no, I was, I tried a few floors and actually th there was a few versions of this. I sent a few to Keith and, and he's, he, he's, on it with quality he prints mm -hmm. them out and and then comes back and says it's too dark so i then learned that when working for print i can't i can't um you know review it on the screen i have to print it out and check um and so yeah getting those um floor tiles to come out and look good but uh also not come out too dark uh, was it was a challenge you know I, I was i was pleased with that and i like that technique i don't like to see the grid i think mm -hmm. it should be part of the map if you go back to the instagram um and if you um yeah if we scroll down a bit uh keep going a bit further yeah that one at the middle that's uh, up a bit sorry the yeah. the blue one a bit this further one. up mm -hmm. with the circle in the kind of middle on the left ah this one yeah that one so this is for a client and this is a hex grid and I've done the mm -hmm. same thing here where I've tried to um, basically make the hex pattern. And again, Instagram's takes the quality away and I can't put the full map for this because it's for a client sure. who's yet to um, uh, yet to come out with what they're doing and they're um, someone of note. So, um, but the, I can show this bit and, and yeah, you can see that although I've hands drawn and then copied the grid so that it doesn't look too rigid mm -hmm. it, it's still uh, honoring that thing where we're not we're trying to make the grid there but not in your face um and i was pleased with that um th this this style i like doing this style i like doing this blueprint slightly futuristic style i'd like to do more like that uh it looks neat um so you know when you're making a map what do you think makes a good map versus what makes a bad map um, so for me, I, mean, I think it varies. I'm in awe of, we were talking about, uh, you know, other amazing cartographers, um, mm -hmm. like Dyson logos, h whose style is, you know, nowhere near mine. And I've tried to do something similar and I couldn't even get close. It's much more difficult than it looks. But for me, what I like in my maps, um, is multiple levels of visual information. So mm -hmm. I like you to better get something from the map when zoomed out or when far away when not looking at the details and then I, i'd like there to be additional levels or layers underneath that so the you know the um, city map we were looking at with mm -hmm. the, the black and white one you know you've got the overall structure of the city the, the big sculptures at, at the back but then when you zoomed in you got some of the architecture and some of the um uh you know uh different styles in different regions and and so I think that's quite important to me that you, you can still discover things that your your journey looking at the map is a bit like the players will experience when they walk around the place and whether the dungeon master puts this in front of the players or whether they use it just to describe um you know theater of the mind that, that you've still got those levels um and so that's what i like and it, on the you know it's the same true on the regional maps i want the overall region to convey something useful but then when you zoom in you're actually gaining something. Yeah, so like the, the, this one that was for um, uh, Disaster Hamsters shows the, the process. Um, yeah, so it's a good example. You've got the overall structure. You can see that there are four, five big cities, a big citadel in the middle and some a lot of water. But then as you zoom in, you see a lot of details. You see some rodents. You realize this land isn't quite normal. There's guinea pigs and squirrels and, <laughs> you know, uh, there's a lot going on. And, yeah, in the game, you'll be playing hamsters. So, um, yeah. Right. And so without naming any names, um, what what do you think are some big map mistakes? Some some things that either people use a lot and they shouldn't or. Yeah, in my opinion, mm -hmm. um, I think it I think it's terrible for dungeon maps or world maps um, if you um fill all of if you try and use all of the space I, mm. I read somewhere online where someone was saying they had a dungeon map and their um one of their players had got 
I can't remember what spell or artifact that allowed them to move through rock. Mm -hmm. A couple of, and they, and they said, well, because every square of the map's used, every, you know, the, the every wall is only three foot thick. I'm like, caves and dungeon systems aren't like that. Don't fill that, you know, like, it reminds me of like a 80s or 90s computer game map where they've yeah. only got 256 by 256 squares to fill. So they're going to use them all. I, I, I think that's a big mistake. It looks artificial. And if you have a world map, where you don't have any big ocean like the Pacific Ocean, and, and you've you've put continents in all the gaps, and it all it just looks wrong. Um, so I mean, it, that's obviously less true if you zoom in and you've got a regional map. You're you're going to use the whole space. But again, um, you, you want to space things out. You don't want to like, and and you can put innocent details in the gaps if you want to fill it. I, I like to put a lot of detail in, but um, yeah, I think I think that's a big mistake. Um, and if you go out and we look at one of the dungeon maps from here, I'll show you an example where we've done exactly not done that. Um, so if we scroll, yeah, that one on the right, the grey, um, the, 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 the sepia, one below. Oh. Yeah. Ah, this one. Yeah. So I haven't, you know, I could have put more caves in all of the bits of brown, um, but the cave systems aren't like that. <laughs> they look like this. Um, and and so we've got um you know we've got regions which are just rock lots of rock um, and that means your dungeon isn't as compact it's spread out um and harder to predict and you can't have that situation where you think oh we haven't explored that corner well that's because it's just rock um uh, so yeah that's that's the thinking here and uh, and particularly you know i think if you if you really want to fit everything in um just take up a few more maps Mega yep. dungeons are like that. You see that in some of the Wizards of the Coast mega, mega dungeons. They are they're square, and every single bit is filled. I, th I think that's a mistake. Yeah, it it does sort of constrain things. I find like if you do have that more space, it leaves it more open to the imagination, more airy. So people get the feel that it's larger than it actually is. Yeah, you just don't know the the, the boundaries then. You don't know what shape it is. Um, you can't teleport to a random square and be reasonably confident you're not going to land in rock if most of it's rock. So yeah, so I think that's mm -hmm. uh, I think that makes things look more natural, in my opinion. But you know, I, I I guess it's valid to have a tight labyrinth. There are situations where you might have a labyrinth like map where. It is that dense, mm -hmm. and that's a style choice. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, another benefit to having it open like this is uh, if your DM is evil, you never know what might be coming out of those rocks. <laughs> well, quite. Yeah. And there's lots of creatures that can move through rocks, and they really are tough to fight. And um, this was a fun one. Um, the uh, story behind this was beyond disgusting. I think the um, in section one, I think that's a pile of poo. <laughs> um it, it, honestly it was it was like, you know, the weird stuff you get asked to draw and this was uh yeah there was lots of creatures that festered and insects and just i was like ew <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so we have uh the dungeon delver he says i'm a cleaner is better guy the sepia tone with the colored map symbols etc don't do it to me but i think there's a valid appeal to those yeah um different um, different styles. I can, I can, I can see that. Definitely. Uh, so, okay. So you're at the point you've gotten sort of the kinks in the system work out. Now you're getting commissions. So if someone were going to uh, commission a piece, um, how, sh so, okay. You as the map maker, how would you like people to approach you? Um, so some people will be like, hey, make me something cool, here's money. And then other people will, you know, like give you four pages of description for one room. You know, where where's the happy medium? How, how should people try to work with the cartographer? How does the cartographer work with the author? I think um, any of those ways can work. So you can have someone who's got a very specific vision. And if you've got a very specific vision, you need to communicate that. Um, but one of the things I'm learning, one of the skills that I think is important is getting that out and figuring that out from the client, because they may not be able to articulate it through asking questions and giving them useful early drafts. I think the worst is 
when there's a very specific vision, it's not successfully communicated, I get all excited, come up with something, and then they want to revise it a lot and a lot mm -hmm. and a lot. Um, it's not a good use of my time if I've got to read through and like make strong notes from you know a very large amount of prose. So I can work, but it's just going to take time from getting the map good. So what, what's really good is um, a little sketch, even if it's rubbish, um, mm -hmm. and um, some bullet points of the features that need to be included, maybe linked to where they are, um, and the bits where there's freedom. You know, it's specifically mm -hmm. saying, I don't know what goes in here. What do you think? Then I can um, I can get creative then. I know I'm I know I'm okay to get creative there without putting a lot of time in, um, and uh, then having to reverse it. Um, yeah, I Sly Flourish uh, and Keith uh, Ammon uh, pr pr provided superb briefs, both both of them. Um, you can see the professionalism there. It, you know, really um, digestible, succinct, um, with some sketches. And we still had a lot of iterations, particularly when working with, with Keith. It's very, very specific on what he wants. So, no, you can't have the door opening that way or block the crossbow shots. Uh, I need it to open this way. Oh, that doesn't work. Then they're gonna um, get an opportunity attack. You know, really thinking mm -hmm. it through. Um, but those details are easy to move around. You know, it's it's much harder if um, you know if, if we're not on the same page early on for the overall concept. So yeah, uh, bullet points of everything that needs to be included because that's a nice way of communicating it. And a sketch doesn't matter how bad. Um, uh, it really helps. Okay. Uh, so the dungeon delver had a question. Uh, Chloe, do you know the history? behind the map for Demon Web in the classic uh, Q1 module. I do not. Can you tell me about that? That sounds interesting. Yeah, come on, Dungeon Delver. Give us a little detail there. I'm not sure I'm aware of the map. I love looking at maps, so I'm interested. I'm going to want to Google that one. Um, because I think, yeah, map, maps are, in, uh, anyway, maps are interesting and enjoyable. Old maps, particularly, but, but informative maps um yeah they're they they're they're enjoyable to to look at anyway um so do you find that you go back and look at not necessarily um maps for games but you like looking at like old you know oh, sailors maps or yeah sort i know of thing? I, I always have um or even i mean just yeah maps are just enjoyable i mean i we're very lucky, of course. We've got Google Maps, which we all take for granted, or equivalents mm -hmm. from, you know. The, the, but even looking at those, it's interesting seeing how places are uh, organized and laid out. Um, but yeah, maps are great. Um, I do genuinely like maps. I'm quite interested. There's a book that's come out, a novel called The Cartographer, or Cartographers. I, I, it's apparently a love letter to cartography I, as a novel. I've got to read that. <laughs> that's, that's uh, I don't know what it's about. I think it's a mystery through maps somehow today we'll cool. see. Yeah. uh let me see so the dungeon delver says the map's crazy design is from module author david c sutherland's bath mat uh, that's a great idea i've seen that other cartographers like they look at, i don't know soap bubbles in the sink and then take a photo and then say right that's it that's going to be my next world map why not <laughs> like uh, you know mm -hmm. I, I guess it stops you ending up designing it in the way that I think is a mistake where you cram things in if you've if you've used something as a visual reference or influence and the story is great no I love that I'll have to look that map out um do you do you find inspiration in other places uh other than like tradition like maps that have come before yeah I'm I'm, I'm interested in um uh trying to move beyond the I mean, it's interesting someone's comment that they don't like that style, and that's 100% valid, um, because mm -hmm. I'm interested in trying different styles. Um, you know, I, I've, I've ended up doing quite a few of these region maps in the kind of slightly cartoony, bright colored style that, that, that I've enjoyed developing, but I'm really interested in um, either when I've got some spare time for myself or for a commission from a brave client um, to go somewhere else with the styles. So, you know, I, I saw some beautiful, um, old um world maps i don't know in the 15th 16th century with a bright yellow um background and green kind of icons uh, and and uh, an absurd version of perspective 
I really would like to do a map in that style. It looks old. It looks unlike anything else you, you see anyone else producing. Um, I'd like to, to push in that direction. I, I, so that's inspirational. I think a lot of um, Japanese art from a couple hundred mm -hmm. years ago, uh, woodcut, um, I think they're uh. bold, cut, the, the interesting tones and colors and the, the paint applied after the woodcut. I think that looks really interesting. I'd like to try and emulate that style in a, an oriental map. Um, yeah, there, yeah, there was a lot of fabulous, um, I think they fall under the Yukio style. Uh, right, where yeah. the, the floating worlds where they had these old maps of Tokyo. Ah, oh, they were, or at least parts of Tokyo. They were gorgeous. That sounds great. Yeah, that bring that kind of thing in. Because certainly what I don't want to do is, like, there's a lot of amazing um, cartographers producing, as you say, the same style again and again. And I don't mm -hmm. want to do that. I, I, also, I don't think other people, I think people who want a commission want something that no one else has seen before. Yes. Um, so there's something that is, that's, that's interesting. Um, so I don't know, but it's it's risky because sometimes you do something that not not everyone likes, um, and or it, it, you know, and and there's a language as well. If you change too much, people don't know how to read the map. Yes. You know, um, if I've got yellow background and green rivers, are people going to pick up that they're um, green, green rivers? <laughs> are they going to get that? Um, yeah. So. Yeah. I, and I think, too, one of the big things for me is consistency, um, at least within yeah. your map. Uh, so for comic books, there was Jack Kirby, who invented Fantastic yeah. Four and a lot of the great characters. Like, if you looked at the way he drew people's knees, you would say, oh, what's wrong with that guy? Uh, but he did that consistently, so everybody mm -hmm. read it as a knee. So, you know, to me, I think that's one of the – that's one of my things on the bad maps list – is, you know, like if you have a style for a tree, you know, you can have a few different, like two or three different trees, but don't change it too much or else it gets very confusing what you're looking at. Yeah, you can put too much in. Um, and it, it's difficult because you know, now I'm getting to a point where I've got my own kind of, all, all the previous maps are, are full of assets for me. I mean, if I take a tree from a previous map, you know that, mm -hmm. that that's going to save me some time sure but then it's going to discourage me from <laughs> from experimenting and trying a different kind of tree um and so it, it, there's a balance there because particularly when you want to pack the map with detail if you're to do it in a realistic time and not you know take two months on it um you need to cut some corners um and yeah so yeah it's, it, it's a balance there's, there's not that much money but um you know in looking at all sorts of maps, um, and I know that now there are several computer programs that will pre-generate, you know, a town map, a battle map, a dungeon. Um, you, it's it's interesting because if you look at it piece by piece, you can't necessarily tell the difference between uh, an original map yeah. done by hand versus a computer generated. But when it's all together, the whole composition. They look different, you know, and I think it's the, even though as much as I say is staying consistent, I think it's the inconsistencies in hand-drawn maps that really draw people in. It, it, that's that's what I like. I don't, you know, even on the, um, uh, I mean, there's a spaceship map on there that, that, that's worth looking at. That, that Even on that, I didn't use a ruler or a digital, I was all digital anyway, but I didn't use a, a, a straight line for any of it. It's all hand-drawn like, because, mm -hmm. it, straight line just looks wrong um yeah. i want it to look hands drawn even as a futuristic map so um and you know i do i do copy and mirror I, i'm not good enough to get that level of symmetry in fact this map was nice because i could put a lot of detail in because so much was replicated you know between mm -hmm. the two sides um and that's a neat trick actually you you copy replicate and then break the symmetry in the middle with the things like the the cargo and the wires um uh, because if it's entirely symmetrical, it looks wrong. Um, but you save a lot of time getting the vast majority of it done. Um, so yeah, again, the, the trick with the cargo um, claw on the right, breaking the symmetry on an otherwise symmetrical map um, uh, works. But yeah, all of these lines were all just drawn by hand because they do look wrong. I tried it when I you know, used the, because obviously the computer, I, I use Procreate mm -hmm. on iPad. Obviously, it can draw straight lines properly, but it just, for my style, looks wrong. Um, yes, 
I, I've I've noticed the same thing with Procreate. It's they're good for some things, like maybe if you're making guides or something, but for the actual line itself, like something and, not and quite right. When I mean I a lot of times when people are drawing not just this but characters, you know, you, you start with a very rough sketch, mm -hmm. you put that in the background and fade it, draw better over the top, put that in the background and fade it, try again and you, three or four versions until you've got the the final version. And and that's true of a lot of the maps. I think the the um if you draw anything like that, you'll get a circle to look almost perfect if you draw it in that way, correcting each mm -hmm. time. So you don't need the ruler, but yeah, that's that's certainly something that I I'm trying to do. Um, and about how long would it take you to make something like this? Yeah, so this one, um, I think it was 25 hours, maybe pushing 30 okay. hours or so. Yeah, I'm getting quicker. Um, but um, especially as I've got, you know, things that I can reuse. So some of those, you'll, you'll see a few of the, the features in other maps, like those generators in the middle. Uh, mm -hmm. They were fiddly, but then like they, they come in handy <laughs> elsewhere. Um, so, you know, you're now you've got commissions. Where do you see yourself going with this in the future? Is it going to be yeah. more commissions? You want to start your own, like a like a collection, a book for people to use? Or? I don't know. I mean, I'm still um, I still got a full time job, so I'm not mm -hmm. um, I'm not a graphics designer. Um, that is an option, but I'm not getting enough commissions at the moment. So I'd have to work hard, you know, maybe I'd have to look at Patreon and all these other things that people do. Because at the moment, I just draw maps. I don't spend any time promoting. You know, mm -hmm. if I put out a good map, usually someone then asks for another one. So it's not, it's not exponentially growing. It's not fading away. It's just giving me new, interesting projects. So I think I'll do that for a bit. I'd like to get more published. So I'd like okay. to get my maps in. Much as I'm completely happy to to do them for some you know some guy just for his game and it'll never be seen by anyone else. That's that's mm -hmm. awesome as well. Um, I, I would like to see my maps in print. There's a few examples. Keith's books coming out. Um, the um, Terminator role playing game has got one of my maps in it. Oh. Um. So. Um. Uh. And uh. Yeah. Sly Flourish has got um the um. Uh, lazy dungeon master guide coming out it's got two of my maps in but i'd, I'd like to continue that it's it, it's it's going to be amazing to see these you know to hold something i've done in in a book and you know who knows um which publishers will be interested and can you see yourself maybe someday in the future either you know replacing the day job or maybe yeah. you know once you retire like oh okay now i have the time to do this more yeah maybe i might um I thought about moving the day job down to, you know, four days a week instead of five mm -hmm. and spending the, the entirety of the other day doing um, this kind of thing. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I don't, yeah. I work in software for a bank. Ah, it's not, okay. You know, I enjoy it, but it's um, it's not what I want to do forever. So, yeah, definitely on the cards. But I also don't want to ruin it. I don't want <laughs> it to become a chore. You know, yeah. Oh, I gotta draw another bedroom. Okay. Yeah, I know. So, because at the moment it's like it's something I can do on the train on the way to work. Um, mm -hmm. if I've got five minutes or ten minutes, you know, just where I I just grab the iPad and I can put a bit more detail on on one room. I've usually got three or four maps on the go. Um, and I flick between them because I get bored of. I'm quite chaotic. Like you see these, I can't do. I could never do one of those. Um, speeded up. YouTube videos of me doing it because people are like, what's she doing? She's crazy. <laughs> As you see these people that, that, that fill in every tree one by one mm -hmm. in order and the map sweeps and it looks you know beautiful and organic. No, I'm all over the place. I'm, I'm in and out details. And so, but that works quite nicely because I can just do a bit that I feel like doing um, when I have a moment. Um, I don't know if, if I was doing it all the time, whether that would feel as appealing. Mm -hmm. Today, uh, you know, and I was wondering too. Um, most of your work is, you know, clearly within the game space, but um, in terms of like, let's say a novel, you know, I, I'd love to do a novel. Has anyone got a novel? I'd love to do. It. I, <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I've seen some people here, but um, you know, I think we can all remember to like 
see, you know, reading Lord of the Rings or something. And of course, right, you're always flipping back to the map in the beginning. You want to see like, oh, where are they going now and where it's going? Yeah. yeah. It, it, it For me, it's so important. I loved the map on Lord of the Rings. I've attempted a similar style. Um, it's hard. I, I, I loved it. I loved the annotations. Um, you know, I loved, uh, you can go online and see what, a version of Tolkien's map that's got his notes all over it. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful piece of art. Um, uh, yeah, I love that. It, 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 it would be great to do something with an author for a book, particularly if the author hasn't 100% figured out their world. So you could be part of creating that. I know that Terry Pratchett's um, Discworld um, mm -hmm. For a long time, people asked him about maps, and he said, "Oh, you know, it's unmappable. <laughs> I'm not even sure how many dimensions it is." You know, he he because he, mm -hmm. he, he he had his creative process isn't like mine. It didn't require um, a, a map and a vision of how things are located. And then some guy I can't remember his name. Um, you can look it up online. Read for all the books, took billions of notes, and and pieced together maps that have been published that were sold as the Discworld and the and at Moorport maps. And I think that's a wonderful piece of cartography because when apparently when Terry saw them, I don't know if this is just marketing, he was like, yeah, I didn't know it could be mapped, but yes, that's my world. That would be great. Wouldn't uh, that be amazing? Um, so, you know, for those authors, um, I saw a couple people here who are in the indie authoring scene uh, in the chat, you know, what kind of things should they be looking for in a cartographer? Um, I think if you're an author, that's an excellent question. I guess I think you're going to want someone that's got a style or is pushing towards a style that's going to suit your novel. I think style is a lot more than just the location of things that's communicated by a map. It, it, it says a lot more than that. The you know is it handwritten? Is it futuristic? We've got a blueprint map in front of us that's trying to communicate some level of kind of I don't know computer display or architectural so they've definitely got to find something where the style fits first and foremost um and and then i guess they're just looking for someone they can work with quite closely because the with a novel you're really going to want to be back and forwards it's not just going to be oh i know exactly what i want draw this well maybe it will but i would imagine more so being part of the creative process of that would mean someone you get on with and can communicate with and um, mm. would be important and as I said, it's something I'd like to do. You know, that would be that would be great. Um, I mean, another one of my favourite maps is, of course, the map at the front of um, Game of Thrones. Oh. And you think, you know, how superbly that communicated, um, yeah, the, the layout of the world, you know, in a, and expanded over the seasons. It was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, and. Um... You know, is can you see yourself doing any like that just for fun? You mentioned before, you know, you did some of the the role playing game maps just for fun, just to get some practice. Yeah. So I mean, I've got. Um, well, I also I, I I finished my campaign, which lasted mm -hmm. six months. I couldn't have coped with any more than that. It was super fun, um, and uh, because I, I I couldn't help myself, I had to map every you know every encounter had to be. I, I use other people's maps as well. I'm mm -hmm. completely crazy, but I had I, you know I had a vision for these things that, that I wanted the players to encounter, and it, it was never going to find a map for some of them. So it, mm -hmm. you know one of them we had the top of a buried netheril uh, enclave city, and it's very specific things. You know it had these like a kind of playground it needed to be. So it had to very very specific features. It had to be drawn, um, and um, yeah, I, I enjoyed doing that. And I've got some ideas for another game I want to run called Cthulhu, set in the oh. 20s, using um, uh, uh, the, um, the Harlem source book by, uh, I can't remember his name. I've got it somewhere. Uh, uh, Harlem Unbound. Um, Chris Spivy? I don't know. I'll check the name and chat it to you. <laughs> but um, I, I want to, it's a very specific. Very specific time the late 1920s in Harlem New York um, and getting pulling together maps for that's going to be interesting I can get some real maps off the archives there's New York yeah. maps from that that region so that's covered I, if there's a real map available I'm not going to want to but the uh, the buildings 
um, we're, we're going to double down on some of these black and white um, kind of architectural views because um, mm -hmm. I think that's going to be important. But yeah, like the, the the ones of the buildings that are kind of skewed there like that. I mean, that this is almost a 20s. It's a almost. Yeah, it, it is almost it, it, it's a um, it, it's inspired by a kind of um, uh, gentleman's club, the London gentleman's club from the uh, you know, Georgian era. So it's a yeah, not not unlike a 20s townhouse. Um, and so something a bit like this, uh, the um, Savoy Ballroom in Harlem. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to draw a map for that. There, there are no map. There is some couple of old, but not detailed maps. So that would be pretty cool to do. Mm. And like a private detective's office, and probably sewers where the players encounter something awful. But yeah, the uh, yeah. So that's that'll be the next one. I'll when I get onto it. Ah, excellent. Uh, so do you have any other advice for people who either they want to make their own maps or, or maybe oh, people I, who want to commission maps? I think my advice for people who want to make their own maps uh, or uh, dungeon masters or get games masters that, that want maps is just to draw them. Like we, something I miss doing being online um, is if I hadn't prepared um, a map the night before when we were playing at school i'd just draw it as we get went and it didn't matter that it was rubbish and actually i think you can convey a lot with really bad pencil marks i, I think it's still very powerful the, the image in the players minds is unlike what you've put on paper so i the people who say they can't draw maps they just just need to mm -hmm. obviously to make them you know look pretty for a book that's a different thing but i mean i think if you put enough detail and, and love into a map. I think it can look amazing without, yeah, just because it's a map. Um, for commissions, to find find a cartographer or artist um, you like the style of and, and chat them. Talk to them about your ideas. Um, you know, respect their rate. These things often take longer than people realize. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, um, and if, if it's out of your budget, then, you know, there are other also amazing cartographers that perhaps you know, I was saying for battle maps, mm -hmm. I, I love doing them. It, it's fun, but I also recognize that there's some very cost-effective people using tools to produce battle maps. You know, that's a great option as well. And they can look amazing. Um, I, I see some, you know, some very talented people doing things very quickly with tools that um, is just as valid. Um, Have you encountered that a lot where people will you know, they'll want to commission you, you quote a price, and then they yeah, of course. whinge about, it's, yeah. It's hard. I mean, you know, I said, these things take, you know, 20, 25, 30 hours. You come up with any reasonable hourly rate and you're already, at, you know, at a um, at a cost. Um, uh, yeah, and, and there, there are people who are, you know, hoping to have a map drawn up for 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, that that's not... There's not much that can be done for that in the way that I'm trying to produce maps, but there are other people who can use tools or just, you know, knock something out in a couple of hours. And that is also valid or draw it yourself. That's free yeah, yeah. and awesome. Uh, <laughs> or don't use maps. I mean, I can't imagine a game without maps for myself and I'm pining for them when our dungeon masters theater of the mind, but that is just as powerful, you know, mm. like, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree with you. Uh, and I kind of like the theater of the mind myself. However, mm. there are certain encounters, like I'm I'm working on a campaign guide, and there's an encounter in level one where there are like 12 combatants. Uh, and it's like, oh, there's no way you can keep track of, you know, how far you are from 12 different people theater of the mind. So you need a map in that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would want a map for that. But I, I don't think there's no way you can keep track. You could have like three zones, near, medium, and far, and you know That's move true. people between. You know, there, there are ways you can manage it. We're used to. Um, you, you lose some detail. You can't really manage. You can't really work out whether you're flanking someone without a map very easily. But um, um, and working out whether the whether the rogue has had something to hide behind. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's hard to pin them down if you haven't got a map. <laughs> but but. But it still works. So I mean, that's what's great about this hobby, isn't it? That that mm -hmm. you know, you, you you almost need nothing. Anything you add can change it and improve it. But it um, 
but I like maps. So I, for my games, perhaps because I'm not very good at ex describing things, I, uh, I want the map down there. Um, so where do you see the hobby going, like different trends? Like, um, you know, back in the day, Gary Gygax is famous for saying, you know, why would people want to buy pre-made adventures? They're going to make their own versus like now, you know, Wizards comes out with several books every year. Um, do you see like the the trend for the industry uh, being more and more maps? Or is this just like a current fad and maybe it'll be reduced or? I don't know. I think there's, there's an, we're in an interesting place for virtual tabletops in that there's a few independent virtual tabletops and they all have different things mm -hmm. and different features. And in my opinion, none of them are quite there. Um, and there's a lot of rumor that, that um, Wizards of the Coast will come up with theirs and presumably other role-playing games, um, you know, might uh, get more serious about virtual ta tabletops. Um, producing maps that integrate with those is a big deal. Um, it's not something I specifically tried. Obviously, you could put my maps on um, Roll20 or Fancy Grounds or mm -hmm. uh, wherever. Um, but I think that's going to become a bigger deal. The, the you know, maps that have mapped the doors and the stairs and the uh, elevations and, you know, and, and then you really are moving away from my style and into something that's that, that's halfway between a computer game. And, and I think that has value. I'm a little less interested in it. I do find that, I don't know, if you make it look a lot like a computer game, people act like it's a computer game. And, mm, uh, that's true. You know, like a good thing, I mean, uh, this map we've got in front of us, it, you know, if you if you print that out and run with it and the players do something awful to one of the load bearing walls, you can scribble on it in paper and represent the destruction that, that, in a virtual tabletop. Is, you're not going to go far before the players do something you can't represent in the yeah in the, the game so but yeah I, th I think that's a big direction i think the the division between increasingly sophisticated virtual tabletops uh that are you know maybe they're going to have 3d views soon it wouldn't be that hard to imagine there are 3d map producers mm -hmm. um yeah you, know, you where you, like i don't know it'd be um, closer to playing doom almost yeah it, it's and, and that again it's valid it's not the game i want um but but it's it's valid because whatever restrictions you have are going to be too much for the game I'm trying to create. It, it, but... uh, so then, just out of curiosity, do you see the whole tabletop gaming? Um, uh, well, let's say Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, let's just use that as an example. You know, there is a big resurgence after Critical Role, and Five E really brought in a lot of new people. Uh, but do you see it like maybe splintering into more specific groups uh, in the future over over something like this, where you'd have more like traditionalists, like, no, 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 I like uh, maps like what we see here versus uh, the 3D maps? Or, or do you think it's something where, you know, the large group would more or less be on the same page? I don't know. I hope that there ends up being lots of different ways of playing it. There's already lots of different styles of game, you know, games that are heavy in combat, games that have got a lot of politics, games that have got role playing mm -hmm. and you know, fooling around. And um, I hope that continues. I hope there becomes a lot of different ways to play it. And that includes the, it's very like a computer game. You've got a 3D view and, you know, um, uh, sort of dynamic lighting and everything's mapped and, and, and that's very immersive, but also, I hope there's also a way to play it with theater of the mind and you know my my bes very bespoke maps that convey something you know unique and unexpected um that, that that you perhaps couldn't get into something more constrained so i hope it it doesn't become too standardized i hope there's not one way to play um and i also i hope a lot other non dungeons and dragons role playing games continue mm -hmm. to flourish i love call of cthulhu i miss playing derps no one plays that anymore um i'm I, yeah, I'm dying to try the Expanse role-playing game because I love the series. So I hope they continue to be another industry. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing my map in the Terminator role-playing game, um, which yeah. also looks awesome. In fact, really yeah. good. Oh, yes, nice. that's look really good. All right, I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah. Um, like really high production values, I have to say. the um, I, I think, yeah, that looks... 
and cool i think hunting terminators in the 80s yeah <laughs> uh can you say who's putting that out or yeah um i can't uh nightfall games i should know nightfall this. Games. oh okay yeah who did right. um slay industries okay so yeah everybody check out nightfall games if you're looking for a non D and D role playing game to check out, yeah, they've got some. They've got some good games actually. I think, and then there's a, you know there's a lot of good independent um, publishers of producing some incredibly creative games. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I'm hoping to explore more of those myself. I, I play in a Dungeons Dragons game, so I'm not you know anti Wizards of the Coast, but it's it's got to be healthy if we've got. A, a lot um, of different yeah. creativity. I think so too. You know, for me, that's one of the the big draws of Dungeons and Dragons itself is there's you know weird factions online. Ah, you can't play this way. You can't play that way. You know, whatever. I'll I'll run my game the way I want. And if you you think you're interested in the way I'm running my game, come on, come to my table. You know, if you don't like it, well, maybe another one's for you. Yeah, it's it's a shame. I really like the. One of the early sections of the fifth edition dungeon master's guide mm -hmm. where it explains what different players get out of the game and it sounds really obvious and you might skim over and think well that's obvious but actually i really liked reading that because it explained how some people you know really enjoy exploring in the mystery and others enjoy seeing their character get powered up and others enjoy mm -hmm. causing mayhem in combat and it, and it gives some hints to the dungeon master on how to appeal to those players but really it's describing a lot of different kinds of game mm -hmm. and you can put a few of these styles into one game but it's just saying it's okay you can play a game where your main thing you do is cause chaos in dungeons and break things. And, you know, you can all play barbarians or wizards with explosive spells. And that's 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 awesome. Um, and it's also awesome if you want to do political intrigue that's like, you know, Game of Thrones. That's also awesome. Yeah. All right, well... I know it is evening time over there in London. It I is. Don't, I don't want to keep you up too much on a school night. Um, any, <laughs> la <laughs> any last thoughts or, or anything else we should know? Um, I don't know. I guess my last thoughts is to encourage everyone to look at maps because it's there awesome. Sage words. Uh, so anyone who's looking for you, they can find you at the art station link. And if you like, I'll put the Instagram link. The Instagram, uh, yeah. Uh, it, or on Twitter, there's uh, Chloe the Cartog uh, um, on Twitter, and the, my direct messages are always open. Um, a lot of people approach, and you know we can chat. And maybe it doesn't work out, and you don't want a map. That's cool. Chat me anyway. All good. All right. So thanks a lot, everyone, for thanks coming. Thanks for having me on. And uh, we will see you again next time.